Why is Malawi sending hundreds of its young men to Israel at a time of war? Do you know Africa will never be free from imperialism? Amazing viewer, I'm glad you're watching. I appreciate your precious time. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section. I love interacting. It's another educational video. We are here for educational purposes. Kindly observe the community guideline as you leave your comments. Let's dive into today's video. You all know that the Malawian government had signed a contract with Israel to send their youth to work in farms in Israel. And right now they're already working in farms. As you speak, they are working. And what are they earning? Nah, it's not about the earnings, you know, but it's more of that. It's more to that. You know, there's a lot. And yeah, some of them are upset, you know, the, the population is upset. But then uh, what do they have to do? Yeah, this is something that so many people are calling slavery and uh, it's being referred to as imperialism. I'll let you listen to different thoughts that people have given, but don't forget to leave your thought. How do you see the whole thing? Is it right to send them to a, a war field, uh, a war zone, as uh, to work in their farms? And was it right for the government to sign such a contract with this government? You know, why, why is that? What do you think about the whole thing? Yeah, this is what we are looking at right here. Enjoy the rest. Do you know Africa will never be free from imperialism? It just never will be. Can you believe that Malawi, the president of Malawi, in a secret deal with the Israeli government, has sent off their young people to go pick farm fruits and vegetables. Do you see the corruption? They gave him $60 million. And these poor people obviously want to work, but the deal of them working is like they're going to get a thousand dollars a month and out of that thousand dollars they have to pay for their airfare and processing and their boarding and living does that remind you of what we do here in the u.s to our farm workers it is so disgusting that these so-called democracies of which we are being told day after day that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East will go into Africa pay off the presidents and get black people to work for white people because that's what Israel is, a white ethno state. I cannot believe this. I really and truly cannot believe it. In the 21st fucking century, we're still going into Africa to enslave people and the African leaders of some of these countries are just as bad as the Western democracies. It is absolutely disgusting. Now, on another episode of what they won't show you on mainstream media is this video over here. Now, before I play it, remember the state that's currently in the media recruited a bunch of influences from around the world, but from USA in particularly, to fly first class and come back home and help us with the agriculture. And some of them did, but in reality is a lot of them stayed for one minute, took a bunch of photos so you guys can see, and then took the next connected flight back home. But what they really didn't show you is that behind the scenes, they recruited hundreds and hundreds of yes, Africans from allegedly Malawi to come to this dangerous, unsafe zone to help them with the agriculture, which I find super ironic given the fact that you have a lot of people running around in green uniforms in camp, eating burgers, playing TikTok, that you could simply give them overalls and tell them to go work in the field. The company needs you. What you are doing is not, is not simple. What you are doing have a lot, a, a big say. The people of Israel. 
Rough climbing, it is difficult time to help us to work on the agriculture. You know, Israel is a country where very important for us agriculture. And I see a lot of similarities with Malawi. So obviously the president of Malawi is getting a lot of backlash for sending his people out of time like this to an unsafe zone. Y'all will never know what type of agreement was made, but it's very telling what kind of leader you are. Um, and for other fellow Africans, I believe we need to do better in protecting our resources, our people and our land. Why is Malawi sending hundreds of its young men to Israel at a time of war, supposedly to work on farms? Malawi is packaging this as a labor export deal. I use the word supposedly because there has been time for Israel to seal this deal with Malawi. Why now? It could have done it in 2021 when Malawi became one of the first African countries to open an embassy in Jerusalem. Why didn't Israel seal a deal with Malawi at that time or in the subsequent years? Why now? Could it be because Israel's economy is taking a major beating and Israel cannot afford to lose more revenue from farms that now have a huge labor gap? And could this be why two weeks ago, Israel gave Malawi a $60 million aid package? I have always told you that this aid that comes to Africa always has chains attached. Look, I know that Malawi's economy is at a bad place. Malawi's currency has recently been devalued by 44%. The cost of living has shot through the roof. I know that jobs are scarce, but there are better ways of finding employment for Malawi's youth than sending them to a war zone for supposed employment. I want you all to put on your critical thinking hat. Just think critically and not think about all the things that have been written down in books by historians. The war, World War II, came to an end in 1945, if I remember correctly. After the war was over and the Jewish people were freed from concentration camps, why do you think the Europeans and the UN, backed by the United States of America, decided to create the State of Israel? Do you think that after Hitler was killed and the Nazis defeated, that the hate for said people disappeared out of Europe? Think about it. Because we have a modern day example that the hate never goes away in America. The Emancipation Proclamation did not stop the hatred that continues for hundreds of years up until this day in October 2023. So what was the motivation to create the State of Israel? Quite frankly, my thinking is that they knew that Europe still had this hatred within them. So to remove it, they created Israel so that they could export the problem somewhere else. Really think about this. Because we have this similar experience here in America. The hatred never goes away. But America could not export all the Africans they had enslaved. Whereas Europe, by taking Palestinian land, 
could export their problem. You know, when you really look back at history and our problems today, a lot of it stems from hate. And it also stems from men making very bad decisions. Well, one of the first things I learned was that when, when I was born, there was no Israel. So where did this come from? Well, what I discovered was that there was a movement uh, that began over a century ago and began operating in Europe and in the United States. It was, a, was and is a political movement that has profoundly and negatively impacted our country. It has tragically impacted the Middle East and it has dangerously impacted the entire world. And yet most of us, I think, have never heard of it and could certainly not define it. It's political Zionism. This was a movement to create a Jewish state in Palestine. It began in the late 1800s. That was it about this video. I'm so glad that you stopped by. I'm so glad that you spent your precious time with me. I don't take for granted the love and support. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the bell so that you get notified whenever we have a new video. I appreciate. Goodbye for now. I appreciate.